Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. We begin with a resupply mission to the International Space Station, launching out of Tanegashima in Japan on an H-2B rocket. An HTV is being used to resupply the ISS. We are launching with a KOS script, so it's controlling the launch. And so even though the boosters run out early, the script is told to separate them at the correct time for separation. So uh, maybe some configuration adjustment needs to happen on those boosters so that they have the thrust tail off. Anyway, well, the problem with uh, sending all these tourists all over the place is that you have to make sure they are still supplied with food, water, and oxygen, as we see the fairings drop off there. Uh, a little weird, those fairings. Uh, they have to be jettisoned instead of decoupled. Anyway, here we go with the second stage. The problem here is that we have too much mass. And at the end of this stage, we do not actually get into orbit and the script has a cow. <laughs> so we have to relaunch with a lighter payload. So that's what I'm doing here. We did not have the ability to get into orbit. The thrusters on the HTV itself are just too weak to try and complete orbit in any meaningful way. So here we go again, lighter payload. And can we make it this time? Well, it's closer, but that's still quite a ways away. The script again has a cow, but I tried to complete orbit using the thru uh, the thrusters on the HTV don't have a plume for some reason. So I'm using the thrusters and the RCS, but no luck. It ends up meeting its demise in Earth's atmosphere again. So we have to launch again. Uh, you would think that, you know, resupplying the ISS would be an easy thing. But if you're pushing the mass limits of your cargo vehicle, uh, it can be it can get more difficult. So uh, we had a lot of H2B launches in this particular stream. And again, all these videos are from live streams. I'm condensing four hours four hours of streaming into this video. And there we go, boosters again. <laughs> and the second stage again. And this time, this time, we're really cutting it close. And it still has a cow, but uh, we're okay in this case. It just didn't like it that we didn't get to a periapsis above 160, which is its target. But this time the RCS and the little thrusters on the HTV are enough, and we can approach the International Space Station. All that trouble, but you know, good to know what the exact capacity is so that next time we can fill her up properly. Also, we didn't really need to carry the unpressurized section. We're removing the HTV from the station. There's, there was already uh, two parked there actually and I decided to remove one which was empty already. And we are putting this in its place. But there's an unpressurized module that's supposed to carry like experiments and stuff that the canned arm will pull out of there and place onto the like the Kibo experiment lab. We don't need that. And so I think in the future I just omit that center section and that allows us to carry more of the stuff that we do need, which is food, water, and oxygen and sometimes propellant. There's the deorbiting of the old HTV and we move on to handling mid-course adjustments for our Mars missions. It's been a little bit of a time since we took a look at our Mars missions, but we have sent uh, station modules and also two crew members out to Mars. The, the crew members are on a different um, craft than this one. We're lining everything up with Phobos. So this is one of the station bits. No guarantee that all the station bits will get there, but if they do, we'll have a nice station. If they don't, we'll have a somewhat smaller station. But this is the crew, uh, Derlaf and Isiski decided to pay for a trip to Mars, Mars orbit, not Mars landing. And so that's their vehicle and we're doing the mid-course adjustment for them. And I used the main engine for that because RCS would have taken too long. I did cause my audience great pain deorbiting that old HTV with RCS set. That, that took a while, so perhaps I was saving them some more waiting around by using the actual engines on this. Okay, and they're all set. 
Always have to remember to add the alarm to a Kerbal Alarm Clock, otherwise we might forget about them <laughs> once they actually get to Mars. Gotta reset the alarms. And the module that we're handling the mid-course adjustment for here is a supply module. It's based on the Leonardo module on the ISS, uh, which makes it rather heavy in terms of dry mass. But I decided to use it because it looked good. And it does, uh, it does contain quite a lot of food, water, and oxygen there, so... Now we have to turn back to that Kerbal that we stranded in lunar orbit, in a very high lopsided lunar orbit in the previous video. Uh, poor little Lugard was carrying some tugs with him, and we sent one of the tugs to handle the business that the tug was supposed to do, but that left Lugard without anything to do and hanging out in lunar orbit without any propellant. I think there might have been a problem with the pressurization of the tank, where the engine uh, was not being properly fed the fuel or something like that. Anyway, we launched a Sajita stage on a Kasei rocket, so there's the Kasei rocket without any boosters. Again, ED6 engines of my own devising, Hydrolox, all the way on the launch vehicle. And there goes the fairings, and that's a little Sajita upper stage, which is methane and oxygen, which is the same fuel mixture that the Lynx spacecraft that Lugard is in uses. So we have made orbit. I did that manually this time. We have plenty of spare in the upper stage of the Kasei rocket. And so we'll be using that for the initial part of the burn. You can see the orbit that Lugard is in. It's a little bit hard to get to and we're gonna have to make adjustments for that. But here's the translunar injection burn and the stage from the Kasei rocket handles about half of it and then this Sajita upper stage handles the other half, but it's got an extendable nozzle. Now, we want to deliver fuel, so we don't want to use all of it up, but there's no real risk of that. It, uh, it, I mean, it's just a tank with an engine attached and some solar panels, so it's not got any payload to push around. So it's got plenty of Delta V. And so here's one of those corrections. There were a lot more corrections that I'm actually showing. And finally, we made our rendezvous. You can see that that's uh, Lugard's spaceship there. And we are approaching. Now, of course, with the lunar stuff, we can send corrective measures to rescue stuff immediately. The interplanetary missions are much more daunting because of the time it would take for us to send something to fix stuff up, right? Uh, so, yeah. That always takes a little bit more. They have to be much more self-sufficient, if you will. I decided to transfer fuel into the service module there, but I'm not entirely sure why, maybe for balance, because we do end up using the ED-4V, the big engine on the Sajita stage, uh, for the burns, like here. We are, I actually decided to bring our orbit down first to make the transfer back to Earth more predictable. It's not strictly necessary, but we had so much Delta V that I decided to use it. And I decided not to have Lugar go to Mirror or anything like that. We were just coming straight back. Lugar did his job. And so this is a trans-Earth uh, injection burn, so coming back home. Typically those are 800 meters per second, though if you're in a very weird lunar orbit, it could be something different. And there we go. We are now in Earth space or Earth sphere influence. We have left the moon. As we approached the Earth, I decided I wanted to slow down a bit, but we had used all the ignitions on the ED-4B and I didn't realize that. We separated off the service module after tra uh, transferring some of the fuel, uh, but ultimately I just used RCS to slow ourselves down. And then after doing so, I made sure that the command module, the Lynx spacecraft, had its RCS topped off, that methane and oxygen in there, that's important, and then separated off from it. So that's what we did. We didn't get to bring orbit down that much because we only had RCS, we couldn't do anything with the ED-4V, and I guess we had a pressure problem with the engine on the service module on the Lynx spacecraft. At least I, I don't know why we didn't use that. I don't remember, it's been a little bit of time. So we uh, did re-entry. We actually lost the arrow cap uh, at some point. I don't know why. But bad staging. But we did not, unfortunately, come straight down. 
we ended up popping up outside of the atmosphere again and we will have to go around. So it's a good thing that I topped off the methane and oxygen in the Lynx spacecraft, otherwise we would not have the fuel to lift our periapsis because as it was, we would be coming in very steeply and might be too hot to survive. So this is lifting our periapsis to mitigate that, uh, come in a little bit more shallow. I mean, really, it shouldn't be a problem. This thing can come back from the moon after all, so it was just a, uh, you know, preventative measure. During the stream, I noted that I did model the seats. In fact, based on the seat I had been sitting in, I actually took out a measuring tape. And uh, it's not exactly the sh uh, form of the seat I was sitting in, but it's the size of the seat I was sitting in. So I planned out the interior of the Lynx spacecraft in detail, and also the fact that the seats rotate. This is the IVA view, which is a little bit weird. Um, probably needs more detail. But... On the bright side, because I modeled the seats directly in the spacecraft, it means that it's sort of ready for the pass-through docking port that I made. So it shouldn't be too hard to adapt the Link spacecraft for the pass-through docking port. Still want to do that, I haven't gotten to it yet. But anyway, we are sitting down somewhere. Doesn't look particularly hospitable, but we'll get to Lugard somehow. One interesting thing was, I was going to recover the vessel, but then I noticed that it was very, very slowly floating along. <laughs> and, uh, well, that's partly an uh, artifact of the way I made the collider, I suppose, but also I guess the line must be sloping very, very subtly downward in that direction. So it's sort of sitting like that, and then it's moving very, very slowly. That was just amusing to me. Anyway, so this ended up being sort of a maintenance session. We resupplied the ISS, we handled some mid-course adjustments, and we saved the Kerbal that we had stranded. Next time, I think we'll have some more outgoing adventures, and we'll see about that. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.